Welcome to Design for the Creative Mind, a podcast for interior designers and creative entrepreneurs to run their business with purpose, efficiency, and passion. Because while every design is different, the process should remain the same. Prepare yourself for some good conversations with amazing guests, a dash of Jesus, and a touch of the woo-woo, and probably a swear word or two. If you're ready to stop trading your time for money and enjoy your interior design business, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Michelle Lynn. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I'm Michelle Lynn, and I am honored and excited to introduce my guest today. It's Ginger Curtis. Many of you know her because she's the owner and founder of Urbanology Designs. And if you're on Instagram, you just see the beauty everywhere. She's also an author, speaker, and a serial entrepreneur. So today we're going to go in a variety of directions but I can guarantee you the conversation is going to be fabulous. So Ginger, welcome. Thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. So much fun. I love love the opportunity that we have to just really dive into a lot of your experience because I know that a lot of our audience, if they're not familiar with you, they will be soon because they're just going to fall in love. But if they are familiar with you, it seems like everything you touch is just so genuine and golden. So Mm. it's going to be a great opportunity to get to know you a little bit better. And I think inspire a lot of listeners um, because your path hasn't always been easy. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's just dive right in and talk about obstacles because as humans, (laughs) as entrepreneurs, business owners, and so forth, we, we come across obstacles, but you know, the little bit that I know you, it seems like you always turn those obstacles and make them work for you. So let's, let's talk a little bit about how you've taken those obstacles and turn them into opportunities. Yes. It's, it's a a topic I'm really passionate about because it's really changed my life. And I've not only faced personal, huge obstacles in my life I've had to overcome, but also in my business. And I would say, especially in my business. And I think obstacles force you to do one of two things, Michelle, you can either, you're either going to grow weary or you're going to become better. And when I discovered that I had an opportunity in front of me, I started looking at life challenges and obstacles a little bit a little bit differently. It's it's really never dependent on our situation. It's always about our mindset. And to me, that was breakthrough because then I realized that I had a choice, that I could show up to my life with the thing that I wasn't expecting, that I thought was going to derail me or possibly drown me or overwhelm me. And I, I could glean something that could te- you know potentially change my life, change my career. And it, it certainly has. And so I've, I've experienced... I've experienced both. I've been wiped out by challenges and I've also stood in the face of them and created paths forward that never would have have ever existed if I was not forced to walk through that difficulty. Yeah. And I, I love to say that life happens for us, not necessarily to us. And by shifting your mindset, like you talked about, you, you take a look at the setback or this obstacle and you can either let it hinder you, or you can use it as something to jump over and learn how to jump higher. Yes, a hundred percent. And I feel like I would just years ago when I was a baby entrepreneur, I felt this like crippling weight and this heaviness when things would would come up that were unexpected. It was it was the, the way that it depleted my batteries felt like I almost mm-hmm. couldn't recover. And I needed I needed to be able to sustain and to move forward. And I had to have some breakthrough in this area. And I'll never forget uh, years ago, I feel like one of my greatest obstacles was feeling like I had to do everything. I I felt like it was my responsibility. I felt like Mm -hmm. that no one could do it better, which was absolutely wrong. There were so many people who could do it a lot better than me. And the weight of this was suffocating and it was causing me to focus on things that my hands really shouldn't touch. And it was a it was a noose around my neck and there was, it was impossible to grow. Um, and then at yeah. the same time, I was keeping my staff small. I was keeping them so small. And when I learned to empower them, I watched mm-hmm. my business transform before my eyes. And I watched it's amazing. superstars. 
I mean, like rise. And and I just thought, how could I have ever been so narrow minded, so small? And I really started to learn to to delegate in order to elevate myself and focus Mm -hmm. on the biggest Mm -hmm. priorities for our business. And it changed everything a hundred percent. And it's not easy to do. Delegation is, I, 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 so I've been in management since I got out of college. So literally like, I don't know, 20 years, 30 years, a long ass time. Um, But in that respect, it reminds me of when you parent, like you cannot do everything for your children. You have to allow them to do something, even though you know you can do it better. Mm -hmm. So I always joked because I've been in management so long that I was going to be a really great parent. I think it's the other one. It's exhausting. It's completely different. Mm-hmm. But in the same, in the, in the context, you have to teach your children. You have to, t- so for those of you who are listening, who have raised children, delegating to your team is not that different. It's just something else. So instead mm-hmm. of picking up their room for them, you allow your team to, to excel where they, where they can fly. And my team, mm-hmm. Ginger, like my team is 10 times better at designing than I am. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you learning how to delegate and share that uh, you can see your company has just exploded. How many are on your team right now? 11 and growing. Now, is that just for design or is that for all of the other places where you have That's, your fingers? That involves uh, procurement operations, mm-hmm. my role. So all together we have 11 and we're hiring um, a junior and a senior. So, uh, but you know, I, uh, Michelle, I really resonate with you said about, it's like raising children. I, I remember when my oldest, who's now 23, Tyler, he's in the Navy. And I, and I just thought like, I was so tempted to just sweep the Cheerios for him. I was like, he's just never going to sweep every Cheerio. And I was mm-hmm. so tempted to just be like, you know what? I'll just fold those towels myself. And I did it. And I had to let him figure it out. I had to let him stumble a little bit. I had to let mm-hmm. him, you know, figure out his own system for how he wanted those towels, as long as they were clean and they were folded. And, and I, yeah. I remember looking over one day uh, on the couch and seeing a pile of fluffy white bleached perfectly stacked cows. And I thought, when did that happen? It happened right before my (laughs) eyes. And it didn't happen like day one. It took a little bit of time, but Mm -hmm. by me not micromanaging that situation and allowing him to do it on his own, he he eventually did. He figured out his path to fold that towel perfectly. (laughs) Well, and And, you have to figure out what doesn't work. So you have to give them that space to say, okay, this doesn't work. This does this and, and, and develop that. So yeah, it's, and also giving them a safe place to fail. Yes, yes, yes. And that requires us getting out of our comfort zone because it's a different mindset to say, look, Mm -hmm. I, I want you to take risks. I want you to feel empowered and to give somebody empowerment and responsibility means you do have to take some risks and you've got to let them know that, Mm -hmm. Hey, this is a safe place to fail, not be reckless. Those are two completely different things. I fail, I make mistakes and I need my team around me to support me when things go wrong. Or I I thought I was making the greatest decision that turned out wasn't. And I have to offer (laughs) the same for them. No, that, that makes perfect sense. Now, do you have a system to delegate and elevate or is it just, um, uh, uh, like, do you have a particular system to delegate and elevate, or is it just a practice that you, that you have in place? Like this is what I do. I delegate so that it elevates them and your business and you as a person as well. Well, I think the first place it starts with, as you know, is really clearly defined responsibilities. Who is responsible for what? So your people can't read your mind? Right. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So that communication is is imperative and uh, you don't want anything to get lost in translation. I think being crystal clear about what the responsibilities, what the expectations are. And then what we do internally, every, every quarter we sit down and we list out what are our goals for our company and how does that translate to department? And then how does that translate to every single individual? And so that, that right there is the, 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 the overall framework that allows Mm -hmm allows us to delegate and elevate. And I'm not the only person who delegates and elevates. I have people, I have my design manager and senior designers and so on. That makes sense. So do you meet with all 11 people soon to be 13 or do you just meet with your senior staff? 
So I meet with my senior staff weekly, every Monday morning, we, we do a leadership huddle up and it's, it's the four of us. And it's kind of like the state of the union, solve big problems, big ideas, mm-hmm. knock down big ideas, focus on priorities. It's kind of, you know, it's a very fast paced, energetic meeting. I love it. It sets, it sets our focus for the week. And then as far as like the next, the next after that, I will do what we call team huddle ups. And so I go up to our design loft and I meet with the entire team and just cast cast vision and the the vision there's a little bit of fresh vision and tweaking on a weekly basis it could be like the overall vision is the same but i've got an update i've got a nugget i want to share i want to praise someone i want to share some exciting news or if there's there's a new opportunity that we're uh we're tackling or something like that then i can share that with the team and so that's that and then um the other thing that i do to get some one-on-one time is to have one-on-one lunches with every single employee in my life in yeah. my in my lineup and and that is that is harder than it seems. I thought it was oh, going to be a breeze, it. and yeah. I was wrong. But it's wholeheartedly worth that investment into them because if you think about it, your clients aren't your greatest asset, it's your people. You have nothing without your team. I absolutely agree, and I'm laughing because it's true. I have regularly scheduled lunches with my team, and it's like, oh, I'm sorry, Nicole, but we're just going to have to reschedule. <laughs> tomorrow we'll do it tomorrow Mm -hmm. or just bring your lunch to the office (laughs) that's what we're going to do we're not going to make it out (laughs) i get it imagine trying to bake a cake without a recipe you kind of know what the ingredients are but you don't know how to put it all together after lots of hard work and trying different combinations all you are left with is a sticky situation and a stomach ache. Babe, running an interior design business can feel exactly that same way. That is why I created the Interior Design Business Bakery. This is a program that teaches you how to bake your interior design business cake and eat it too. If you don't want to figure out the hard way and you want guidance to follow, a recipe that has already been vetted someone that has already been there and done it and will help you do it too, then check out the year-long mentorship and coaching program, The Interior Design Business Bakery. If your interior design business revenue is below $300,000 or if you're struggling to make a profit and keep your sanity, this is the only program for you. You can find that information at designedforthecreativemind.com forward slash business dash bakery. Check it out. You won't regret it. So you were talking about clients. Let's, let's kind of switch over there. No, actually I want to back up a little bit. So in our introductor, in our, in our introduction, we talked about you being a serial entrepreneur, but then I also asked is your quarterly goal meeting with your entire staff, because girl, it's not just a design firm that you run. It's um, you've got a book out, you mm-hmm. have a, a short-term rental, and then you also have an event space. So mm-hmm. with all of those, you've got, and I think your short-term rental is called the Urbanology Co- Cottage. There you um, go. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's lovely. Y'all need to check it out. I'll make sure that at the end today, Ginger, you can tell everybody where they can find you and all these wonderful things, but then we'll also have the links in the show notes. But do you take your staff on to these projects? So is your staff involved in your overall vision of the company? <laughs> Always. Yes. Cause I couldn't do it without them, nor would right. I want to. And so, yeah, it, it first started with tackling our, our building, which is, uh, a commercial space. It's called the Urban Firehouse, and that that's our design house. It's it's where we operate. And yeah, uh, that's and what you said. There, you go up to the design loft. Yes, we go. So to the, the design loft. loft is awesome. Okay, it's it's it really is. We 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 really made it special since we we live up there so often. I wanted it to be a place that was inspiring and beautiful and comfortable. Well, then the rest of the building is is spacious and it's gorgeous. It was an old fire station that was abandoned. We renovated it. We transformed the space. And I decided to, I thought, you know, like, hey, why why don't I just like tackle running another business? How about we start a venue? <laughs> like I don't I have it. anything else to anything else to do. And so we transformed that space into something really special. And it's now a full-time venue called the Urban Firehouse. And you can rent it out for events or weddings or 
birthday parties or anything like that, it's it's available and it's located right between Dallas Fort Worth and North Richland Hills. So it's very centrally located to the Metroplex. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So, okay. So you've got that and then you've got Urbanology Cottage and then yes. you have the book. All, I mean, you've got the venue, you've got the cottage and you've got the book mm-hmm. and the design firm. So yes. that is, you take everybody on your team along for the ride. Yes, absolutely. I, I feel like the the book was a solo project, but then again, at the same time, it could have never existed without them. So I I, I took the the charge to create the book and put it all together. But all the stories are of me and my team together. Nothing ever right. happens without it being a, a team effort. And it's really you and you do this so well, Michelle. But just so lavishly and you know. Uh, beautifully credit your phenomenal team for what they contribute. And I believe in that a lot because I know that I may be the face of our company, but I am certainly not where all the talent lies. And and I'm just, I'm so wildly impressed by my team and their level of commitment, their hard work, the way that they show up. I mean, it's just, it's inspiring. And you know, when I, when this, when I had this aha moment that, um, that there were, they were true leaders and then I was capable of creating leaders who could create leaders. That's when things got really mm-hmm. exciting. But, well, tell uh, me about but yeah, that. back to the, back to, oh, okay. The, um, yeah, tell me about the cre- creating- raising up leaders to create. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So one of my favorite quotes is by Tom Peters. Leaders don't create followers. They create leaders. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I just, I, I believe in that. And I feel like grabbing hold of that concept changed my business, which changed my life. When I started seeing my people and the potential in them, and, and again, I had to move away from this mindset that I should do everything. And I had to mm-hmm. start empowering them and then sewing into them at a different level, really investing in them. And so good, good leaders have vision, great leaders inspire others to have their own vision. That's when things like, I mean, just can really go off the charts. This level of thinking can change your organization. So if micromanagement is soul crushing, then empowerment is life giving. And, and that that that. is what, that's what I strive to do with my team. And I tell you what, it is so much more fun. (laughs) It is (laughs) so much more fun to do it that way. Well, and the way I look at it with my peeps is like, you have more business owners in your business that, uh, and maybe not, I mean, they don't have ownership in it, but if they have the mentality of being a business owner alongside of you, because you empower Mm -hmm. them and you allow them to be leaders. Exactly. I mean, think about all the brain power that you have. It's not just you that has to come up with all the solutions. Exactly. Exactly. And how many ideas have been brought up that, that have changed the course of the way you operate or Mm -hmm. a process or an interaction with client because one of the team members said, Hey, I saw this. I observed this. What if we did this? I mean, holy mackerel, like that is, that is to be celebrated. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a testament to you that they continue to bring those ideas to you, that you allow them to implement whether they work or not, because I'm assuming that not every idea that's brought to the table is, you know, game changing, but sometimes you have to try things that you might not otherwise pursue simply to determine, Hey, that's so off the wall. It could work. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So yeah, whether it's in design or business, it's like, that's so off the wall. It's either going to flop or just knock the socks off. Yeah, it's absolutely. It, I, I, it's so hilarious. I, I find it's usually not my team who comes with ideas that don't work. It's usually me <laughs> because I, I am an idea generator. I have, I'm 10 light years into another realm of like, what could be working? What could we be working on? What could we be doing? I, you mm-hmm. know, I, it's like, what, do, how's that saying go ready fire aim that that's that's me and so yeah. when you approach life ready fire aim for better or for worse <laughs> yes. you know there's going to be a few misses and so i really the challenge for me as as a, a true i feel like i would say i'm a true entrepreneur i love running a business i love running a company i love leading people i feel very called and born to do that and um yeah it's it's uh, it's exciting and so but but with that visionary mindset and that just ready for action i have to be careful and the the watch out for entrepreneurs is and visionaries you have 
got to stay focused because everything, every great idea is not a now great Mm -hmm. idea or maybe even ever. And it's really, really challenging to dial it in and focus on the the most important thing and stick to it ruthlessly, ruthlessly focus on that thing and get your entire team on board. Everybody's rowing in the same direction because, you know, I I could have, you know, years ago, I could look around at my team and I'm like, okay, someone is in a floaty floating over there. Someone's in a paddle boat. Someone's just doing breaststrokes across the pond. Someone's sunbathing Mm -hmm. on the shore. Like everybody's kind of in the water or by the water, but we're not, certainly not all in the boat rowing the same direction. And when you, when you align yourself and your entire team to a singular focus and vision, that's when big change happens. That's when you actually move the needle. I, and I, I love what you just said, because we literally, um, for ML Interiors Group, we were all together and then COVID happened and we've all been working like like floating in the water, like in different areas. The consistency for ML Interiors Group has suffered a bit um, because we were not all rowing in the same direction. Plus we have you know the coaching side. And then now we've got the studio works and just the things my team was all over the place. And we have recently were housed in the same office for the last year. And we are doing things consistently and just reviewing our processes and our procedures and tightening up what we know works. And yeah. it doesn't matter. Like what you just said, y'all that are listening in the, in the audience, just know that even mature businesses can stray off the, the shore, <laughs> to mm-hmm. use your analogy, you can stray off the shore a little bit. And you do, you just have to throw everybody back in the boat and, and, and as the leader, point them where to point them where to row. Exactly. Get, get, get alignment and focus. And it, it mm-hmm. has got to come from you. It has to, you've got to be yes. the champion for the message of what is the most important thing. And are we all rowing in the same direction and, and make sure that they have the support to, to do that. And somebody's, um, you know, once, once ever that, that there's a gr- good to great. It's a wonderful book. Make sure everyone's not just yes on the bus or in the boat, but that they're in the right seat. And that also makes <laughs> um, a really, a really huge difference. And so, but, but also just kind of going back for a minute, Michelle, to obstacles and, and thinking about opportunities in our business. And sometimes we can get a little bit off track and you've got to refocus and get everybody aligned. I was just talking to an interior designer on the Northeast coast and I asked her how her business was. And she said, everything is drastically slowed here in, in the Northeast. And, uh, and I was like, Oh man, I'm sorry. And then like the first thing I thought of is, wow, what a fantastic opportunity to get some alignment in your yes. team in focus on culture, focus on processes, take a deep dive, audit, do an audit of your website, edit out or old portfolio images that are not as strong, like get, get some, some training and up level what you're doing with uh, customer service. And it's like, we, we, dream to have time enough to do those kinds of things. And so instead of panicking yeah. and focusing all that energy in into just this 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 fearful, this fearful state, we can use that time and those moments to our advantage. So it's just such such a great example of of looking at obstacles as opportunities. That's a great point. And it also changes the energy that you're sharing with individuals around you. Mm-hmm. Because if you are being productive and you are making strides to improve your business, that mindset of scarcity, it doesn't have room. Mm -hmm. Simplify your marketing, simplify your life. If you are an interior designer who's serious about growth, you must check out Sidemark. It is an all-in-one marketing and sales tool, and it's made just for interior designers. Growth comes standard with Customer Relationship Manager. You can attract, convert, and retain clients by nurturing your relationships. Email marketing is to create, grow, and maintain a healthy email list. A social media planner allows you to grow your audience and engagement, and it has artificial intelligence. A sales pipeline manager You can track leads, follow up like a pro, and you can close more deals. There's plenty of marketing automation where if you want to send an email update to your client at a certain point in your project, you can send them a congratulations email when a new deal is closed and welcome them onboarding by pre-planning it. Would you like to unify your inbox? 
You can have all of your emails, texts, social direct messaging, a website chat bot, all in one inbox. So you're not having to go back and forth between your email and your DMs on your social media. Text messaging, higher open rates and lower opt-out rates. It's an amazing way to communicate with potential leads as well as current clients. And it's all documented through this platform. Calendar booking, reputation management, a virtual phone number. Like I mentioned, a web chat widget, artificial intelligence powered content. You just tweak it and make it sound more like you. There's forms and surveys so you can gather crucial information from clients and leads. And there's an exclusive learning content built into this platform. I can't say enough about Sidemark. I use it myself in my interior design business. I've been looking for this platform for over a decade. In all transparency, I'm a co-founder. It's just like furniture. If you can't find it, you customize and design it. So check out mysidemark.com, start your 14 day trial and life will never be the same, I promise. Okay, so we've talked a lot about like all the business things, delegating, elevating obstacles and so forth. Let's let's kind of shift into a client-centric conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, going back to the person you're speaking to in the Northeast, things are slowing down. I, I think you and I agree that it's our job to educate our clients on the impact that their yes. spaces have yes. on their well-being, their life, their performance, like all the things. Mm-hmm. How do you go about sharing that information with the client and 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 getting them to make that investment? Yeah, it it's such a worthy pursuit. It's a worthy pursuit for us as professionals. It's also a worthy pursuit for our clients. And you said it, it really does start with educating them. And some people view design as as unimportant, as sad as that is, or unnecessary as a, an unnecessary indulgence. Even the right. people who hire us and value what we do at some level really don't always understand the greater significance of investing in yourself, your family, and the overall quality of your life through your home, through elevating and improving your environment. And what is really, really exciting is that there is there is now hard facts and data and research out of John Hopkins and the Mayo Clinic. So the the science and the medical communities have now come together and say, guys, we have some compelling information we want to share based off of years of research. And in fact, your environment impacts not only your productivity and your sense of calm, but also your wellness. So what does that tell me, Michelle? It tells me that that interior design, that our environment and design is a vehicle to improve Mm -hmm. the way you live in your home. That is a message that our clients need to hear. That is a message that is important and will change people's lives, the way they raise their children, the way they heal, the way mm-hmm. they grieve, the way they celebrate. So you you are so worthy of being invested in and so are your clients. And so I want this mentality of it being this fluffy, unnecessary thing to be gone forever because mm-hmm. now we've got information that says it is not fluffy. It is not unnecessary. It is the exact opposite. It is profound. And it's important. <laughs> I love that. And yes, and I think by having those establishments like John Hopkins and the Mayo Clinic stating that, it's more than just our instinct because we know it as professionals in this industry. We also know it just even, I mean, even before you got into opening urbanology, you knew the healing that your home does. You know the joy that it elicits when you walk into a space that mm-hmm. is just done well. So I'm, yes. I, I, I'm going to go Google and find the, find the papers. So, okay. <laughs> this is what you guys need to check out. It's called neuroesthetics. It sounds super geeky, but it's the coolest thing you will ever uncover. And neuroesthetics is really about how we are impacted by our environments. And it is absolutely fascinating. And it's something that I've studied and talked on uh, quite a bit. And the first time that I ever had this experience that that I was actually like aware of is years before uh, I started interior design firm. This was back when my daughter was five months old and had just been diagnosed with leukemia. And we had found ourselves at St. Jude in Memphis. And we mm-hmm. stayed at a Ronald McDonald house that changed my life. And I cannot even describe to you like the 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 difficulty of that journey and watching my daughter suffer and walk through that. 
And then walking into this place that was so magical, that was so special and thinking somebody had the foresight to realize what these families were battling. Somebody was smart enough to realize that if we created a space that was beautiful Mm -hmm. and inspiring, wonderful, intentional, it could change the way that these families walk through this journey, the way that these children heal, the way these children fight Mm -hmm. for their lives. And that was profound. Never in my life had I had experience like that. And, and I would have something similar happen to me later down the road when, when I would fight my own cancer battle once Avery finished her treatment. And, and just once again, it was just this awareness that honestly, we shouldn't have to be fighting for our lives or for someone else's, for our our homes to be a place of joy, reprieve and healing. Mm -hmm. That's y'all. I told you that this was going to be a good episode. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, and and I pray that people don't have to go through that in order to realize the importance. But mm-hmm. that you're getting the message out there as designers. You know, I hope everybody listening goes and googles the it's neuroesthetics. Neuro neuroesthetics. Yes, we need yeah. to we need to start talking about this. I'm going to proclaim it through for from the rooftops. I'm going to be doing a lot in this area because it you 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 said it again, Michelle, earlier that we know it innately. We are mm-hmm. connected to this so deeply, but now it gives us words, it gives us tools, it gives us mm-hmm. it gives us um, a greater level of authority and permission into something that's already innately wired in us. And now with that vocabulary, we can share it, uh, share that with the world and with our clients, you know, the actual importance and the weightiness of this. Yeah. I, and I, I absolutely love that. And I will share in that platform and hold your, hold you up to say, yell it from the rooftops <laughs> there, Ginger, because it is so important for uh, the, for the design industry to know that there is this foundation that backs up what we already know instinctually, but also for the general public to learn that, you know what, sometimes paint color, yes, it really can impact your mood Mm -hmm. as well as all of the other details that go into a room. So that at at, at every level, Michelle, like every demographic, every budget at every, every location, like you should not be disconnected from that ability to be intentional with your environment, right? So I specialize in luxury Mm -hmm. interior design, right? And so even though that's my specific niche, I 1 million percent believe that at every level, in every investment, wherever you're coming from, you deserve Mm -hmm. to be able to look at your environment in a way that that, that we're, you can have an awareness that you are worthy of beauty. You are worthy of investing of, in yourself and, and you are what, worthy of investing in your family. And that brings us, I mean, that literally brings us full circle because I think one of my first questions was how have obstacles created opportunities for growth in your life? And that, <laughs> I mean, there you go. You're sitting there at Ronald McDonald home house that, I mean, that's a hella obstacle. Mm-hmm. And exactly. Exactly. Oh, and, that. and that that was an example of something that would take years before I would ever connect the dots mm-hmm. on that. And, uh, and, and boy, though, when I finally put those pieces together, you can imagine my delight of gosh, man, nothing, nothing has to be wasted, especially a difficult mm-hmm. journey where, you know, life is too short and too precious to allow anything to be wasted in our lives. Mm-hmm. And that, it's a God thing. He puts Absolutely. you where you need to be. And just it opens your absolutely. eyes when you're ready. I love that. Ginger, I could sit here and speak to you for a good couple of hours. Um, of course, I would need to get some food. But uh, <laughs> besides that, um, <laughs> let's segue into the section where it's just fun, rapid fire Q&A. Okay. Just for the audience to get to know you a little bit better. So let's start with something easy. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Cookies and cream. What's your biggest pet peeve? Loud chewing. Oh yeah. Um, what is one thing people would be surprised to know about you? That I used to race jet skis. Oh, fun, 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 mm-hmm. and speed. And then I'm deathly, deathly afraid of grasshoppers. Of grasshoppers? 
And Girl, that, don't I you a, I live a, like how much acreage do you have? Like, don't you live on a pond thing in Majiggy? That's why I need a lot of prayer and intervention in my life. We have so <laughs> many grasshoppers. It's a real issue that I didn't consider when I moved to this property. But yeah, I, I need Jesus every single day. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. Grasshoppers are, yeah, kind of buy one, get 25 free. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite productivity hack? Favorite productivity hack. Ooh, man. Uh, You know what? Okay. Uh, Blinkist. I love to read books, especially business books, and it it can take a while to get through an entire book. And so the Blinkist app bullet points it for you and, and reads it to you audibly. And there you go. And I feel like I can be productive and get all of the nuggets and the information without sacrificing any of the big stuff. So, right. No need for all the fluff and the stories behind it. It, it, Exactly. There you go. That's it. I love that. Okay. So what is your favorite book? It doesn't have to be business. It could be. Um, Let's see. Gosh, man, I have a couple, but uh, Wooden by John Wooden. Uh, he is a very famous basketball coach. It's so random. I don't even like basketball. Oh. Okay. Yes. Hate me for yeah. not liking basketball. I can deal with that. But <laughs> it, it, I, somebody made fun of me when I was in, in elementary school and because teased me of how short I was and I wanted to try out for the basketball team and they laughed and it kind of put this bad, you know, anyway, it's fine. I need <laughs> inner healing. Well, uh, moving on. Um, <laughs> uh, but, this, but it was a good book. book. It was an amazing book. I highly, very inspirational, super practical, reminds you to slow down and just focus on the little things and doing the little things well. It's rarely one big breakthrough that we have in life. It's showing up every single day and doing the small things well over and over and over. Oh, I love that. And I joke about it often on the podcast that that's one of my favorite questions because I get this whole list of books. (laughs) Mm, that's that's smart. On my smart. There's your productivity hack. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And last but not least, if you could have dinner with anybody, past or present, who would you invite? Oh, my siblings. My siblings, James and Laura, who passed mm-hmm. away. Does that count? Am I? You said past. absolutely. Mean, yeah. Past okay, or yes, present. I would. I would just do anything to ha- sit down with the two of them and and share a meal or. Uh, an appetizer or a glass of wine or an appetizer or anything. It would mean the world yeah. to me. Obviously that can't happen, but two, two people who, who passed away at a far too young age, who I miss dearly, who um, really inspired my life and a lot of who I am today. Oh, that would be really, really special. Well, mm-hmm. thank you so much for sharing so much of yourself yeah. and your journey and obstacles, turning them into opportunities. And it's just always so fun to catch up with you, Ginger. And I feel like um, have you ever done human design? Human design? No. What's yeah. that? Okay. It's, um, I can't really explain it, but I feel like you and I probably have a similar, I'm, I'm a, what you call it, an emotional manifesting generator. And it's just this whole study of all the, uh, I can't explain it, but it's just, <laughs> is it, a it test was spot on. It's or a profile. Um, So it's a profile. Thank you. Yes. It's a profile and it's based on where you were born, what time you were born, um, like literally where the, the stars were, it's got all the, it's not astrological, but it's that and and like some of the itching and it's just, it's, it's crazy. And it has all of these. Yeah. My friend, Nicole Lano, did you meet Nicole at the summit last year? I don't know. No, I think she might've opened and you closed. That was two years ago. But anyway, um, she did our human design and it's just very interesting. The things that it's, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. I love stuff like that. I love stuff like that. I feel like I've spent a lot of my lifetime being very non-self-aware. And I feel like as a mm -hmm. leader, that is an attribute that you really, you can't afford not to do. You need to be self-aware as a leader and understand your strengths and your weaknesses and all your different events. So I, it sounds Well, thank you for giving me some words because I was just sitting here on the struggle bus and (laughs) yeah, I did it with, yeah, I, um, I did it with my, for my husband, kind of see where we mesh up with my daughter to see things and my entire team, I had their human design done so we can all see how we work better together too. So it's very interesting, but anyway, I I can get you Nicole's information. She's fabulous. Um, But thank you for being on the show. I always enjoy our conversations and appreciate your time. I know it's valuable and I know our audience absolutely loved everything that you shared. So as a recap, 
social media handles. Where can they find you and all of your cool things that you're doing? Okay. All the cool things. So Urbanology Designs is our Instagram handle and our website. The Urban Firehouse is our venue. And that's on Instagram as well. And we've got a website and then the Urbanology Cottage, which is our luxury vacation rental. So uh, it's located in Weatherford, a few blocks from the Charming Town Square and the courthouse. And it's got its own Instagram feed and website with beautiful imagery that will get Mm -hmm. you like it will suck you in and you will never want to leave. In fact, you'll have to go book (laughs) yourself a getaway. (laughs) There you go. That's the plan. And your book. And my book, thank you. Um, It's called Beauty by Design. And it really does share my story and how it it, it wasn't all rainbows and butterflies. I really did face some tremendous obstacles, but how those obstacles shaped and formed who I am and eventually launched my business. And then in addition to that, it's it's also a field guide. It shares best tips and practices for design and favorite go-to for products and paint colors and all those really wonderful things. And so it's kind of like a dive into my brain and what I love and just my personal point of view from um, a personal perspective and a professional Mm -hmm. perspective. I think it's one of the few coffee table books that I've read and not just flip through and looked at the pretty pictures. So Mm -hmm. it's got a lot more substance. So absolutely. Thank you. Well, I'll make sure that those details are listed in the show notes for our audience to reference. And for those of you who can benefit from even more resources surrounding the business of running your interior design business. You can check out designedforthecreativemind.com. From there, you can navigate into our free Facebook group where we have a fantastic supportive community. You can check out our paid program, the Interior Design Business Bakery. And we I just mentioned that the summit will be coming up soon. We've got a sales and marketing software that has just launched called Sidemark. So all of that is housed under designedforthecreativemind.com. And finally, wherever you're listening to your podcast, please drop a review. It really helps keep us relevant. So thank you for listening until next time. And thank you, Ginger, for being here. Thank you for having me. This was wonderful. Hey, y'all. If you love the show and find it useful, I would really appreciate it if you would share with your friends and followers. And if you like what you're hearing, want to put a face with a name and get even more business advice, then join me in my Facebook group, the Interior Designers Business Launchpad. Yeah, I know it's Facebook, but just come on in for the training and then leave without scrolling your feet. It's fun. I promise you'll enjoy it. And finally, I hear it's good for business to get ratings on your podcasts. So please drop yours on whatever platform you use to listen to this. We're all about community over competition. So let's work on elevating our industry one designer at a time. See you next time. Thank you.